Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to make a presentation to the second MENA Energy Summit. My name is Tim Carlson. I'm the Executive Director of the International Partnership for Hydrogen and Fuel Cells in the Economy Secretariat, the IPHE. First, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm on the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations. In my presentation, I will briefly describe the IPHE and then uh, outline some of the actions that the IPHE is taking to help facilitate the global trade in uh, hydrogen. First, some details about the IPHE. It is a government to government partnership uh, with the goal to accelerate the deployment, development and deployment of hydrogen and fuel cells. Uh, our objectives, our priorities are to share information on the latest developments uh, within member countries. And this is to inform each other of the issues and uh, help develop future government policies as they uh, are, are crafted in member countries. It's to foster collaboration as well across key work items. And I'll be ta talking about those in the future. We have detailed updates on the uh, countries uh, on our website at uh, www.ipag.net. And you can see further details on each individual country there. We have two working groups, one on regulations, codes, standards, and safety, another on education and outreach, and then two specific task forces, which are uh, of particular interest today, one on hydrogen production analysis and the other on trade rules. We also work extensively to coordinate our actions with other international organizations uh, of related to hydrogen. Quick snapshot uh, of uh, deployments uh, recently, this is being updated regularly, but just gives a sense that fuel cells and hydrogen are being deployed globally. In the United States, nearly 10,000 fuel cell electric vehicles, a network of over 60 uh, hydrogen refueling stations, uh, in Europe, extensive truck, bus, and uh, fuel cell electric vehicles uh, in place, and a, a network of refueling stations there as well. In Asia, there's lots of activities underway. Uh, for example, in Japan, they have over 345,000 combined heat and power fuel cell units in homes installed today. Every day you hear news about uh, new hydrogen strategies. Over 30 national and regional strategies have been published uh, over the last couple of years, most recently uh, in the UK, but we have uh, roadmaps in Japan, Korea, the Netherlands, the United States, France, Norway, the European Commission came out with a very extensive uh, strategy document recently, Portugal, Spain, Canada, et cetera, Chile as well. Over $50, 000, $50 billion in public funding have been identified to date. Uh, lots of international organizations are publishing strategies and recommendations from the International Energy Agency to the International Renewable Energy uh, Agency and of course the Hydrogen Council. Uh, trade corridors are being set. Uh, Japan with Australia is often in the news, uh, exploring opportunities. And of course, most prevalent here is MENA with Europe. Uh, ports are, are looking at uh, creating hubs uh, with uh, uh, Sen in Portugal and Rotterdam in, in the Netherlands and Antofagasta in Chile, just some examples. Key strategic issue is clean hydrogen. Briefly, IPHE is one of the international initiatives uh, underway related to hydrogen. I'd like to just go over some of the others. There is the Hydrogen Energy Ministerial, which is a minister to minister conversation that happens once a year. They will be uh, meeting again in early October in Japan. There is the IPHE, which is a government to government and more at the officials level. Then we have the Hydrogen Council, which is the industry grouping with uh, that's led by the CEOs of major uh, corporations around the world. Uh, they, the uh, Hydrogen Council also publishes regularly uh, reports and documents and studies, um, Hydrogen Insights, for example, and uh, are heavily involved in 
in understanding the business cases for the investment in hydrogen. The International Energy Agency has two uh, technology collaboration uh, programs, one for advanced fuel cells and the other on hydrogen uh, on the technology side. And then on the policy and market side, the IEA has its um, te energy technology policy division. Uh, they will be coming out with a global hydrogen review soon, uh, uh, probably in early October to uh, marry up with the hydrogen energy ministerial event. Mission Innovation has clean hydrogen, it's just uh, 2.0. It's just been launched, uh, which is pushing on the innovation side and its companion, the Clean Energy Ministerial is looking at the market pull and how that they can pull the technologies into the marketplace. The International Renewable Energy Agency, as I mentioned, uh, has a collaborative framework on green hydrogen, working with other organizations and seeing how renewable energies can be used to uh, provide the uh, energy sources for the generation of clean hydrogen. And then the World Economic Forum is also working extensively with IRENA and others uh, to look at the opportunities for accelerating the development of green hydrogen. Key drivers that we see uh, are based on national circumstances. Uh, the first being, of course, a key driver is uh, environmental benefits. And that is uh, climate change is uh, often the key thing that is raised, but also local air quality. And this is something that often is a driver in the regions. Energy security, security of supply, that's very important. And a diversification of the resources for energy is also a key driver. Energy system resiliency and stability is uh, another key driver uh, whereby you effectively use variable generation and at scale, and then you set, you couple that with the other sectors, industry, with transportation, and with the energy sector uh, to uh, effectively use your power generation systems. And then the other is economic growth opportunities. And this is uh, often what uh, underlies some of the decisions in that countries are looking for new products, new supply chain opportunities, skilled jobs and manufacturing opportunities. These are all things that countries are looking to as they build um, economic strength and address environmental obligations. What we see as the key challenges in getting to scale for hydrogen, continued focus on innovation. Must get, we must get to a low carbon hydrogen um, that is cost competitive. And this takes innovation and it takes scaling up. There's clearly a need for a stable and strong policy signal. And we are getting these through uh, uh, strategic uh, plans, roadmaps with tangible targets and goals. Regulatory certainty and consistency is also very important and hence the work on codes and standards and safety requirements. And then market transparency is another key feature and I'll talk about more about that in a few minutes. The third key uh, feature to get to a global scale is infrastructure investments. Uh, we need to look at new production methods, being at steam methane reforming with carbon capture and storage, uh, electricity, renewable, with electrolyzers, for example, there are a number of pathways that can be used in the production of hydrogen. You need to look at investments in efficient transportation systems, uh, transmission being at repurposing of existing pipelines or use of new hydrogen carriers. And then we need the effective use in processes and products. And what are the business cases uh, for making the same products we make today, but in a different fashion? So for example, in the steel sector, they're looking, how can they use clean hydrogen in the steel uh, sector rather than uh, using coking coal, for example. So I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about uh, issues uh, that the IPHE are working on and the two task forces uh, specifically to start with. Uh, the first one is uh, the hydrogen production analysis task force. The key feature here is that in order to drive uh, clean hydrogen global trade, you need to know what the GHG emissions are related to a unit of hydrogen produced. So we need to have common internationally agreed to standards 
for the safe transport, storage, and tracing of the environmental characteristics of the supply. So the IPHE is not a standards body, but we are looking to develop a mutually agreed to methodological approach to determining the GHG emissions associated with the production of a unit of hydrogen. And then we hope that this agreed to methodology will help facilitate market valuation and international trade in clean hydrogen. So this is the initial steps to get to uh, determining the GHG emissions associated with the production of hydrogen, and that work is ongoing. The next task force that we have is on trade rules. And here the issue is, what are the current trade rules for hydrogen or for hydrogen carriers such as ammonia, liquefied hydrogen, uh, or even the liquid organic hydrogen carriers that are being considered? What do the trade rules mean for large volumes of trade in hydrogen? And when we talk about trade rules, we mean what's the tariff rates in the various trade agreements? What are the technical requirements, such as the certification for safety and for security? What are the customs procedures so that if we start to produce large volumes of hydrogen and is being transported, could these or are these potential uh, barriers or, or impediments to trade? So this is what does the playing field look like today so that when we implement the hydrogen strategies, they are very successful. The first of our working groups is on regulation code standards and safety. Here, we're looking at understanding what are some of the areas for action. And specifically, the group is uh, acting as a catalyst for cooperation in uh, addressing some of these issues. Looking at, a, a, it provides a forum for uh, dialogue and understanding and making recommendations um, on what areas in which uh, work can be done on regular codes and standards. And recent work has been around hydrogen infrastructure and on hydrogen in the mobility space. So that work is ongoing today. The fourth work item, the second working group is on education and outreach. And here we're sharing information on fuel cells and hydrogen technologies, the status, challenges, and, and um, the various opportunities and initiatives underway. We do have a, uh, an event we try to uh, promote on uh, the 8th of October, which in some people has written uh, 1008, which if 1008 is the atomic weight of hydrogen, so that's uh, the hook there for communication work. We do publish newsletters, we host webinars, uh, we, do, uh, we have an early career network to engage people at university level to consider hydrogen and fuel cells as a, um, uh, a job opportunity and a career opportunity to the future. But we also are looking to broaden the understanding and engagement of the public to get social acceptance for hydrogen in the economy. So what do we need to do to stimulate and, and facilitate the global trade in hydrogen? We need to continue to do fundamental research through development, demonstration, and scale up of um, uh, different hydrogen applications. We need strong market frameworks, policies, and signals through roadmaps, targets, and objectives, regulatory certainty, and then market transparency, which is the work uh, that some of the IPHE uh, groups are, are undertaking now. Third, we need significant investment in uh, infrastructure uh, to get to large scale deployments. This investment is by governments, industry, international financial institutions, and investment houses. We all need to set targets, track, and report. And that's one of the activities that will be happening at the hydrogen energy ministerial this fall. And with that, I'd like to draw my uh, presentation to a close. But first, here are, uh, are my contact details. And we are um, open and always interested for countries uh, to join the IPAG. And so please contact me if you have some interest or if you have questions uh, on the IPAG. And again, thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to speak to you today at this summit. And with that, I would like to draw my presentation and session to a close. Thank you very much.